These are the Vason 28mm, 40mm, and 85mm 1.8x anamorphic lenses. The 28mm features a T-stop of T2.2 through T16. The 40mm is T2 through T16, while the 85 is T2.8 through T16. The 28mm and 40mm share a minimum focusing distance of 2.7 feet, and the 85 is 3.8 feet. The 28mm weighs a respectable 1.59 pounds and is modestly sized for the Micro Four Thirds system. The 85 comes as PL or EF mount weighing in at 3.28 pounds, but the 40mm is 3.97 pounds with a gigantic front element that looks so out of place for Micro Four Thirds, you might mistake it for a long range telephoto lens. I've been shooting anamorphic since about 2014, and I started with the SLR Magic 1.33x adapter. And this is actually being shot on the SLR Magic 2X adapter, mostly because the Vazen lenses are here in front of you, and I still wanted to shoot anamorphic to keep it real. Hashtag Annie Gang. That being said, the SLR Magic 2X adapter and the Voigtlander taking lenses that I use has left me both stylistically and creatively satisfied compared to any other adapted anamorphic solution. But what about technically satisfied or mechanically satisfied? Well, that's a bit more complicated. Now, there are a few issues when shooting with an adapted anamorphic setup. From having to stop way, way down in order to get a sharp image, to requiring a ton of extra lighting just to make sure that your image is exposed properly. There's dual focusing issues, there's alignment issues, there's clamps, there's brackets, there's projector lenses. It's fair to say that an adapted setup will never ever be as effortless to use as a single purpose-built anamorphic lens. So why doesn't everyone use an anamorphic lens? Why go through the hassle and the headache of setting up an adapted solution? Turns out, very simple answer. That's fucking expensive. Now, I believe that the best way to show what a lens is capable of is to use it in a production setting. So, I set up a series of scenes, each with a distinct style, to better understand what these vasins would be like to use on a larger production, or even a feature-length film. Jack, wake up. Jack! Where's the stampede? It's on its way here. You've got 30 minutes to prep the plane. I already made your flight plan. Whoa. Wait, hold up. Don't want to hear it, Jack. Just get the plane ready. I can't go to Las Vegas. I'm off work at 5.30. It's not my problem. Come on, Mary. I've got a vacation planned this weekend. You can't just throw this on me. You want to quit? Be my guest. Hey, that's not fair. Fair? This client is a VIP and pays like one, too. That includes paying you to sit around until he says wheels up. Besides, I'm sure little Miss Sorority would love to go to Las Vegas. Hold on. Is that what this is about? Are you still pissed that I'm dating? I'm pissed because you're a pilot who's complaining about flying. So unless you want me to send you to Estonia next time, please get the fucking plane ready. <sighs> Shit. When I schedule a meeting with the Senator, I expect to meet a Senator. My apologies, Assistant Director Gadine. The Senator was pulled away into a meeting with the Defense Subcommittee. I'm Scott Parker, Senator Willem's senior aide. I know who you are, Parker. Take a seat. Double Masters in Political Science and Foreign Policy from Georgetown, Bachelors in Intelligence Management, three years in Iraq, two in Tehran. 
before being blown up by an IED. Shrapnel on both legs, punctured lung, ruptured eardrum, broken arms, shattered collarbone. Mm -hmm. And a partridge in a pear tree. What the hell is a guy like you doing putting around the office of Senator William all day? Is there anything I can do for you, Director? Walk with me. Approximately two days ago at 0600 hours, the NASA went dark and didn't check in with his handler. His mission was supposed to be to upload and download the Turin's intelligence data. I thought SOP was to wait 72 hours after missing a drop. It is, but this asset is in a spot so deep it'll make a tick jealous. And the defense secretary doesn't want the military hitting a panic button. And do you think Senator Willem can help? I think the defense subcommittee can. So you knew the senator wouldn't be at this meeting? Of course you did. You called the subcommittee session, which means that you wanted to speak to me. Why? Not everyone has the special skills for espionage, Parker. Your military strings are cut. You have no living relatives. No girlfriend, boyfriend, spouse, not even a pet. You are a spy in everything but title. And right now, your countryman needs your help. test videos I've watched, there are two things that instantly eject me from immersion. The first is poor alignment or off-horizon flaring, and the second is vertical distortion or image curvature. I'm pleasantly surprised to see that none of the Vazen lenses have any of these issues. As there is no secondary optical adapter, you will always get a horizontal flare, which not only saves time, but won't result in you getting your footage back only to realize your flares were slightly diagonal and your subjects curved to the left or to the right. Now, the bokeh is shockingly undramatic. 
I tend to stop down to minimize depth of field, and most of these scenes were filmed between T4 and T8 on average. And truth be told, I've never much cared for that kind of pixel peepery, but I can say with some confidence that while the bokeh isn't buttery smooth, it's also not drawing my attention away from the focal point. The best thing that I can give it is that it's not distracting. The sharpness across all these lenses is very strong, and in some cases I've actually softened the image in post. They aren't super soft or dreamy, but they also aren't clinical. The Vazins have character, but it's the type of character that will allow you to be a little flexible with it in post. Okay, so let's talk about color. As I've said before, these lenses have a lot of flexibility when it comes to the look. The true color of the Vazin lenses are right in line with the sharpness and bokeh, which is quite neutral. As a set, they do seem a tad low in contrast, but for my particular style, that's a welcome touch. Now, I've graded each short differently. I've added blur, grain, sharpness, adjustment layers, etc. to show you just how far you can push the style of these lenses. Now, the flaring seems rather controlled for the most part. I did not use any kind of matte box, so you might well see some indirect flaring. It does have that signature anamorphic blue look, but again, it doesn't really feel that overpowering, even when the light is shining directly into the lens. Okay, the focus. So obviously there isn't much contest here. Being able to pull the focus like a normal lens is not only simple, but the overall effect of being able to shoot anamorphic has become less stressful, less prohibiting. But just like the majority of anamorphic lenses, the minimum focusing distance is still an issue compared to standard spherical lenses. At 2.7 feet, you do sometimes have to work around certain shots, but this is where diopters come in. So let's talk about the squeeze real quick. The 1.8x squeeze is actually rather pleasing, but still shy of that 2x look. That being said, it's light years better than some of the 1.33 anamorphic lenses and adapters that have come out recently. And while I prefer the 2x, I also realize that a harder squeeze changes the math on how big and heavy a lens will be. So a compact 1.8x seems like a worthy trade-off. Side note, on my GH5, the only option for de-squeeze is for a 2x lens, so while it may not be perfect, it's still adequate for framing your shot on the 1.8x. Low light in anamorphic is always tricky. Rarely does anamorphic glass look sharp at its fastest F or T stop, and the Vazins are no different. The 85mm was particularly challenging during the night shots, and despite the fact that the focus is easier to pull, I still missed the mark several times. They didn't do bad, but they're no match for my F0.95 Voigtlanders. Solution? Rinse some lights. With the Vazins, I find myself confidently being able to repeat shots instead of having to get lucky. As anyone in film will tell you, the ripple effect of having properly functioning equipment is sizable. It's less frustrating, more efficient, and gets you home faster. With these lenses, I feel like I could shoot a feature length film and not have to second guess my choice, or piss off my director with extra takes because my first AC is fucking around with a dual focusing lens. And I'm also confident in saying that while I love my SLR Magic setup, shooting with these lenses has been sublime, and I'm not sure that I can go back. The Vazins have absolutely earned their spot in my tool bag, should a project ever call for it. Okay, quick pickup note here. After using these lenses for the last four months, I wanted to talk about a major criticism that I have, and that is the 28 millimeter versus the 40 millimeter. I see little to no difference in the image change in terms of focal length. And in the grand scheme, I would probably not purchase the 40 millimeter as it offers no real advantages to the 28 millimeter. It's bulky, it's heavy, and it has a really long focus throw, making it near impossible to do rack focusing without shaking the image considerably. Handheld is also pretty tough, and rigging it to a gimbal system without a ton of counterweight seems unlikely to happen. And because the 65mm seems like it will follow suit by being large and unbalanced, it leads me to only being able to recommend the 28mm and the 85mm. 
Also, the cleanly etched numbers are too big, and the distracting burnt orange color and the semi-rounded font actually make this lens look almost like a toy rather than a serious lens. But the font's a minor quibble in the grand scheme. Anyway, felt that needed to be mentioned. If you enjoyed this review, please consider donating to my Patreon listed in the link below. Please take care of yourselves. See you next year.